Hey guys, welcome back to the episode 29 of the Aftermath podcast. My name is Vin Diesel and I have the Oreo boys with me. <laughs> Shit, this is family. You know what I'm saying? Family. This is family. Yes. This yes. is our Check out these guns. Out. This is our. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that why he's in white? Huh? I'm sponsoring Way. Oh shit! You're sponsoring oh, Way. For me. <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, aesthetics, sorry. bro. You got the Sultana brand. Sultana brands. Proteins. I like the purple. Way protein. I like yep. how you try to subtly flex your tricep, just like turning a little bit. Yes. <laughs> this is the first time that all four of us had you no know, are actually showing up to like to a podcast. Yeah. In a long like, time, after yeah. like what four episodes, four five episodes? I don't know. This is the first time I'm doing a podcast on the 27th <laughs> one. Like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll start, I'll start. Uh, let's introduce ourselves properly. Properly. My name is Okso. Hi, I Okso. am a cool boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm John. This is um, Usama, and I'm Paolo. I'm Paolo. Cool. And today we're going to be talking about the um, the show Winning Time. The Rise of Lakers Dynasty, uh, which is directed by Adam McKay, um, the guy who directed Don't Look Up and Step Brothers. Hey, big shot. And also Anchor. Anchor. Anchorman, sorry. Anchorman, Anchorman the first yeah. one. Anchorman. That's pretty cool. I didn't know he directed Anchorman 1, those. Anchorman 2. Anchorman 2, and it's about Magic Johnson. Do you, oh, yes. do you want to say and anything, Paolo? Lakers team. Say anything. I want to say a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, introduce the character who's, who's Magic Johnson to people who oh, doesn't okay. know. Okay, so I think this film... Wait, wait, let's introduce the setting first. Yeah, so th- this film is very good in a way because like... From the it's intro. For, it's for like novice people that aren't into like basketball. Yeah. They, I think they kind of gave the kind of Laker lore pretty well. Yeah, uh, they yeah. showed it pretty well. Lakers, um, if you if you know Mike Magic Johnson, right? He is like a five time champion. Yeah. Uh, I don't okay. I won't do any spoilers, but like in his career, like he's had like all these crazy accolades, winning like Finals MVP at such a young age, uh, and then even high school and college, the NCAA tournament, he actually went head to head with Larry Bird, which you see in the series, yeah. right? Yeah. And Larry Bird. You see the yeah. I, th- I think you see the start of the competition arising during the draft process. Yeah. Because yeah. he gets uh, picked by the Celtics, who was at the time one of the most, um, one of the greatest teams, right? Uh, the, the winningest team. Yeah. And to for relative to that time, especially like the Lakers were actually like really bad. Like, oh, okay. At you also, also got to consider like, so Lakers. Even Kareem. Yeah. So uh, Bird and Magic Johnson, right? Those guys, their play style, the way they scored the ball and like kind of run the show, right? Yeah, it yeah. like brought a lot of people in. It like created a bigger audience yeah. for the NBA because the NBA, uh, nineteen seventy nine, I believe they were thinking about like not continuing because it, it wasn't bringing in enough money, right? Hmm. Money and fans. But because of Magic Johnson and players like Larry yeah. Bird, they single handedly like brought the audience to come in. Uh, and that's the reason why you see players today getting all these like $40 million contracts yeah. per year. Yeah, right? Right. They're very uh, yeah. marketable individuals. That's yeah. why they recognize him by his smile, right? That was the most prominent thing in the show. But also yeah. like, um, I think the intro of the show, Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty was really good because yeah. it goes through the whole period during that, especially that time period. The show during the intro itself, like the crack ep- epidemic, like the elections and then the, the voting rights, et cetera, et cetera. And then this is happening all in the background of LA. And it's a pretty cool story because LA is like the symbol of like, I guess the symbol of um, prosperity Affluent. and aff- yeah, affluence, affluence yeah. as well. And it's like mm. a huge, it's a huge region, which is, um, we could say, yeah, we could say like taken over by this disease called affluenza, I would say. Or is, I forgot what the book is called. Yeah. Asama Asama. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. help us? <laughs> yeah. What's well, well, affluenza? Affluenza. Yeah. Affluenza. I, I don't know much about but, it, but John seems to. Uh... Um, but it was a really cool <laughs> intro. I really liked the intro. It set itself mm. apart from the other shows that are very similar to this show, The Winning Time, such as yeah. Ballers. If you guys are watch Ballers, the one with Dwayne Johnson and Entourage, because mm. it takes a very similar sort of route where we feel like it's like a dark comedy, sort of, and also an insightful uh, look into the Lakers team, especially um, the team dynamics, at least from the first three episodes. Yeah. 
we see how it's uh, going on and that not everyone is in their right place at the right time, mm-hmm. but there are yeah. famous people in the team. It's yeah. just that they're not at their fullest potential yet because they have a so, coach. Yeah, that this is, is like a, um, it's like a show, but it's not accurately depicting events, right? This is like a bit of dramatization, something similar to I like think Narcos. It could be is accurately de- depicting, depicting events because, um, yeah. especially with the sexualization of the show, right. uh, Magic Johnson, as we all know, he contracted mm. AIDS. And yeah. Um, yeah. there were stories, at least when I used to watch his talks on Oprah. HIV, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then it oh, turned into AIDS. It, no, it wasn't no, AIDS. It's actually it's AIDS. AIDS. It's AIDS. Oh, we'll but they're the same actually. thing. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Isn't it? Shit. Sorry. <laughs> Our sexual education was yeah. in a Catholic school. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what it is, but <laughs> it was a pretty, it was a pretty cool, it was a pretty cool look into the psyche mm. of a young Magic Johnson, you know? Yeah. And yeah. he's completely untethered from his family. Yeah. And he's just going on his binge, I guess. But he's also a very brilliant young man in the sense that he <laughs> knows what his self worth is. Yeah. Towards the yeah. team, because even his father yeah. started about him in episode mm. two. Yeah, and it's not like we can really give any spoilers because this event's already happened. You know? I'm yeah, saying? like I didn't know he got yeah. AIDS. You don't know? I, I, I knew when that, that was my, wasn't that the um, first um, scene? Or oh wait, my because person? they didn't oh, correct, show yeah. you. No, exactly, they haven't right? shown. Oh, okay, show okay, so that's why that happened yeah. in the first scene. That's why the guy was crying. Who was that guy, anyways? I think I'm. I'm not sure. Is that his manager or something? No idea. I can't remember that first scene. I don't know. But yeah, it, yeah. The first scene wasn't Magic Johnson. It was someone else. No, no, no. no. Like when he was at the doctor's office. Yeah. I think he was yeah. helping. He was there with a teammate or something. It could have been like some injury or some shit. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It was Magic it's Johnson. Yeah. That was Ooh. the, you Maybe know, the that's result. a season finale. But yeah. I really liked that, uh, the build up to it. Yeah. Shit, some of them. Did, like, the, <laughs> what did you guys, what did you guys think of, of the, um, you know, breaking the third world moments when they like start talking to the camera. It's a bit at, strange, isn't it? Yeah. At first I actually I, I yeah. wasn't a fan of it. Yeah. The fourth one. Like I was not a big fan. Yeah. Of it. I, sorry, um, the fourth one. I just didn't like how, cause I'm like kind of a basketball fanatic. So I kind of understand what's mm. really going on. I didn't like that. They had to kind of tell me what's going on. Yeah. Mm. But I understand like if, it's for a mainstream. Yeah. For mainstream, audience. it's probably more understandable, but I think it, gets better like episode two and episode, three yeah. yeah when it starts yeah. getting into the groove of the yeah. interactions it's pretty cool it's, the way the uh, yeah also like the way the uh the way they edited the show in a sense that it looks very 70s like even mm-hmm. the down to the grain as well to the mm-hmm. granules they use down to yeah, like yeah. the overlays they use on the image it's yeah. pretty cool it feels like i'm watching something out of a vcr player or something yeah like, it's i mean like VHS. vhs sorry. yeah, yeah. The scene a lot where... of handheld cam as well, like a lot of shaky cam. Yeah, and like, do you know how? Do you, do you, a little have, bit of shaky you, cam. You've guys seen um uncut giant gems, right? Yeah, yeah. It yeah, kind of yeah. reminds me of that a little bit, Oof. like the little like shaky cam and like I confusing. Know, <laughs> <laughs> I it, think it didn't it really have me have too many. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? My bad. No, no, no. No, you were saying something. Um, no, no, that's not what I was going to say already. I forgot. Oh, okay. Uh, what I was going to say was um. It felt it felt like I was watching a mockumentary. I would say a yeah. mockumentary because it was it's sort of kind of funny as well. This um mm-hmm. the directions that he goes in, and especially that relationship he has with Cookie yeah. who later yeah. went went on to become his wife. That relationship was kind of funny. The dynamics, especially man, they're both spoiling yeah. my drama, playing man. off each other. What do you mean? It's a, it's a, they're actually I'm the mainstream <laughs> guy. Oh, okay, yeah. they're married in real life. Uh, no, he doesn't get married in the yeah. show. He doesn't get married in the show. Can, can I spoil oh, no, this? It's only three episodes, though. The fourth one's coming out next week. But right? you, yeah. I don't but know. you told him that they end up together, even yeah, though yeah. You know. I didn't even. I didn't know that. I just looked it up online. Did they end up together? I was like, shit, Cookie yeah, Johnson. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Wait, so later. how did he I contract um, AIDS? Well, was it later after he got married, or was it during? No, no, it was before. So he was very sexually active. I we see oh, this in the I show. Think, I thought he got uh, AIDS like towards the end of his career. Yeah, he got he, he got it during the end of the career. He had a career. was on um, during he during his time in a dream team in the. No, yeah, no, 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 he was, didn't. He I didn't. He did. He did. He did. He no. He he didn't. He hundred percent. He got AIDS and then he got kicked out of the league because like players yeah, he did. didn't want to play with him. But and he was there he in the dream team during the dream team. Yeah. 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 He he came back during the dream team, 
And that's when um, I remember remember the last dance that scene when when Michael Jordan was like, "Oh, I don't want to touch him." He, uh, <laughs> oh, she's unguardable. Scene. No, it's, it it's, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of people were educated about it. I think Magic Johnson. Yeah, yeah that back time then. Was, even for yeah, me, Magic Johnson was because I never, I wasn't really that keen on basketball until I saw the Dream Team and like right. how this coach, this one coach, uh, forgive me because I forgot his name. He joined all these players together into one team, and it was like a, yeah. it was like a, you could say like a mosh pit of personalities clashing with yeah, each other. It, it was literally every single all star or franchise player from, uh, every team just squeezed into one team, and these all star players who usually have yeah the bows all together yeah. like yeah, um, yeah, ball hogs. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all like ball hogs, but they actually had to play like role. But really role good. That was the cool story. Is like before before that professional players weren't allowed to represent the team USA yeah in the olympics but Except then like after other, russia other nationalities. was it russia russia beat um usa cuz these russian it was like players, a college team like, i think no russia beat yeah, usa yeah, for yeah. the first time was, i think even though they were wasting college teams yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it was the OP, first time bro. so they were like oh yeah we're going to bring out professional players cuz it's unfair and ever since then you know unconstitutional um, usa has <laughs> pretty much won Every single Olympic gold medal except one. I think uh, back 2004. in two thousand and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like Kobe Bryant and LeBron James in the uh, team. Kobe, I think. Kobe wasn't in it. LeBron was in it because oh. they were just like. Oh, okay. Because the players at the time for USA, they were just like, oh no, we we just want to focus on the regular yeah. season coming up. And then they got yeah. bronze, and then everyone. Oh, 2000, 2008, the Chinese Olymp- the yeah. China Olympics. Like, yeah. that's when yeah. they were like, all right say less let's get dwight howard let's get <laughs> Dwayne. let's just get everyone on this yeah you know i think I, yeah because spain won right yeah they beat usa yeah yeah but uh, the the impact of magic johnson especially yeah, and cool. larry bird in uh the olympic games um the dream team right sort of a send-off i would say yeah it was a send-off for both of them like larry bird and magic johnson they were both co-captains and yeah. usually on mm. a team there's only like one captain right yeah so you could understand like the impact they had if you yeah. think about like Los Angeles, especially like 1979 era, that's like Hollywood, right? Hollywood. So Peak all the Hollywood. actors, everyone would go there. And the thing is, is like they couldn't get people in the actual seats of the stadium. Yeah, yeah. right. And now that Magic, or well, now that Magic Johnson's there and all his passes and playmaking, like everyone started wanting to watch and mm, the Showtime to, Lakers. Yeah, the Showtime Lakers. And to credit that is actually mm. Jeannie Buss, who's the current owner of the Lakers. So this is um. Yeah. This is Dr. Yeah. Boss's daughter, and you see her Doctor, interning yeah. for them, basically, interning right? For them. And mm-hmm. she comes up with the idea, you see, the marketing idea, the promotional strategy of introducing musicians into the stadium yeah. as yeah. an act, you know, uh, yeah. before, the, before the main game. Yeah. I, don't, uh, I don't really watch NBA games and stuff. Do they do that now? Or? No, they definitely still do that. Um, they're more like, what's the word? Uh, they interact a lot more with the fans, like they bring yeah. them down, especially. Bring them down because well. they're usually just like in the middle of the court. Yeah. Unlike the Super Bowl, it's just like a huge thing. But yeah. the same thing, yeah. basketball's a small court. Yeah. But it was really mm-hmm. interesting to see the relationship of Jerry Buss with um, Magic Johnson and also his stern belief in what he could do for the Lakers. And he yeah. put like he put his all into it, like all his money yeah. into yeah. it as well. I like how they that shoot. Was a bit risky, but. Risky, yeah, man. really risky. They, I love how they showed like, because they even now in the Lakers organization, they put a lot of emphasis on this being a family owned business. Yeah, because they mm-hmm. don't want any other owner to run it. And Genie Bus's brother, who was running it before, yeah. was kind of ass. And that's why like they kept losing all these games. If you yeah, remember, right. like Kobe's final season, like, mm-hmm. was like, not that good. Yeah, um, yeah. And the Lakers Definitely. and they tried to get him help, but no one wanted to come to LA. So they struggled mm-hmm. attracting free yeah. agents. We uh, saw the other guy as well. Remember at the when Magic Johnson goes into the all white dress party, the oh, uh, the LA Clippers, uh, the owner of LA oh, Clippers, um, so the Donald owner, Sterling, Donald Sterling, so, and yeah. I had no clue about him until you remember that basketball episode that we did. Yeah, so the and, CBA and yeah, yeah, I was researching about that, <laughs> yeah. and that's when I came up onto Donald Sterling, so, and so. they made like a sort of joke about it. Yeah, uh, they, like they were... the fourth wall break, and it was just like this is uh, one of the wor- uh, one of the two worst Donalds that I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... yeah, it's funny they were talking about like, oh, now he doesn't do coke yet. He doesn't do he doesn't do coke. Yet, so. <laughs> there was a lot of yeah. it, it was a very um, high octane 
energetic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, like, very, mm -hmm. um, very good show in that sense. And also, I, I don't think it had much about boss, basketball as a game. It was more like yeah. the relationships between the players. It was, and it was the, a lot yeah, about the politics. Coach. Yeah, the politics as well. Especially the Celtics. I had no idea they were that. They were that popular. They won eight times in a row or something, right? Yeah, so yeah, Bill, Russell Bill Russell took them to yeah. 11 chips. And it yeah. just goes to show, yeah. like, during that episode, where, I mean, in the episode where they meet at the diner yeah. and they talk yeah, to each the other. Irish. And um, the he owner. tells them yeah. that your name is not even going to be remembered anymore. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, that's true. Because for me, I'm like, a, I'm like a mainstream sort of guy when it comes to basketball. I have no idea who that guy is. Like I didn't even know like Celtics were that good of a team. All I know was yeah. the all I know is Ray John Rondo. That's it. <laughs> sure. uh, is, yeah. is he even Celtics anymore? Uh, no, no, he's no. Old now. <laughs> no yeah, but he's, he's still playing, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's good. He's a good veteran coming off. He's bench. getting bounced around the league now. Shit, good but veteran. Like on, on that's a nice way of saying though. you're old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on valuable teams, though, yeah. But, <laughs> veteran oh, is like he's like, like an army officer <laughs> or some shit. Yeah, Oxo, Oxo. Huh? I want your opinion on this. How did you feel about seeing um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that? Well, I, I thought he, the actor was cool. like, he looks exactly like Kareem yeah, Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, like, eh? like the hair design and I mean, everything. I mean, I mean, Johnson was, like, looks very similar. Yeah, he was like very calm and like, he was like very religious. He was actually Muslim. Um, yeah. And um, I didn't realize his character was like that. I do you know that scene when the kid was like, oh, um kareem can i have a photo with you and he's like fuck off kid <laughs> yeah. yeah i didn't know he was like that rude you um, know that scene yeah. that scene is yeah. uh showing the behind the scenes of them filming the the movie he starred in airplane yeah. which is the comedy yeah. from the 1969 1970 is, is, is that famous uh yeah it's a pretty famous comedy that was um, yeah. awesome. Right? No, that's always no, no, that yeah. was during the 90s. But because of the way that it's filmed, right? The, the, the winning time film. is filmed. I couldn't yeah. tell, and because of how <laughs> similar the actors look to the original people. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Even couldn't tell if it was actual footage from Airplane or, yeah. or not. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and I still like have doubts about it, but I, yeah, I don't yeah. think it is because it's. it's that I don't think. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, they blended crazy. it. I don't know. But like coming from like, you know, a background that you, you have no, you know, you don't know basketball that well. What do you think of the show? Do you think it's entertaining? Do you think you learned a lot? Or um, I, I knew about like I used to like the Lakers, so like mm. everything I knew about basketball was the Lakers. So I I do know right. some of the things that happen in in the show, yeah. but right, uh, just from a you know the breaking the fourth wall as a mainstream mm. guy, I, I I did like that. But it's interesting mm. to to hear um like Paolo's uh saying that he didn't like people telling him stuff he already knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right, but, right. So that's interesting. But as yeah. someone who doesn't know everything, um, yeah, I thought it was. Interesting because I never watched anything like that. I, di I didn't watch Ballers, mm -hmm. as John pointed out. Um, Andrade as well. Andrade yeah. is very similar. It was similar. yeah. It was it was a fun show. Um, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just before I watched Winning Time. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it put me in a very like sixties, like, like yeah, sixties <laughs> like relaxed vibe, state. Like. Yeah, just like vibing, just watching Dude, whatever. Hippie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Slow like you, you gotta watch. Although they don't like hippies in that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You Once gotta Upon watch um. um What's that show? Uh, the Nice Guys. The, yeah. uh, here's a movie. It's hey, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> you and Shane Black, bro. <laughs> and um, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Dude, they're so funny. It's like black comedy yeah. at its finest. I don't but, know his um, other works. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> his yeah. other work, but he's directed some really good movies. And The Good it's Guys. A, very few movies. It's, it's and, only like um, four, four movies. It's not... Huh? But he write, he's, yeah. screen, he's a good screenwriter. He's pretty yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's anyway, really funny. It's one of the funniest movies. It's really good as well. And it represents Hollywood at that time. She, yep. John. Hollywood yeah. at that time was... Uh, and... Oh, sorry. No, continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was just going to talk about the acting here. I thought John yeah. C. Riley really did a great job. Yeah. He came off as incredibly likable. Yeah. At the same time, it's very charismatic. You'd have to be off. as well if you're playing um, yeah. Dr. Buzz. Dr. Buzz. And, Dr. Bus. Yeah. and also, you could see how oh. people were attracted to this image of him. And yeah. also, his relationship with his daughter. And also with the team. And I felt like, um, oh, this guy's not... He's like a chill, relaxed dude. And then there's mm -hmm. that scene where, you know, a certain person quits the team. 
and then he gets like aggro as hell and you could see okay this guy's got a human side to him as well he's not just always chill hippie yeah. guy who's um yeah. always hanging out with the supermodels mm. and the play bunnies and stuff but it was really cool to see his insecurities as well with his hairline <laughs> with his ha- but also his insecurities with if the team's gonna fail or it's gonna it's gonna win the championship because a lot yeah. of people in that league were putting him down and i i really liked his portrayal because i i haven't seen john c Riley in a yeah. very serious sort of role at least yeah. from my experience i don't know he probably yeah. has a couple of movies like that like you last always time, see him in a sort of comedic Step role. Brothers. yeah even stepbrothers and stuff <laughs> where he plays like a really awkward um yeah, yeah. <laughs> here here it's like a fully fleshed character i feel like as Jerry mm. Bass. obviously yeah. he did like really good research on him because yeah he came off as like a i think he's probably my favorite character in that whole series yeah as of mm-hmm. yet magic johnson is great but he obviously at when he was a young young kid he's probably like a little young bit athlete. of a dickhead like yeah. <laughs> cheating mm-hmm. on cooking and stuff uh right. but it was very interesting to see that also um i really like the celtics boss i forgot his the actor's name um what's his name what's his name i guess probably find it somewhere Like, yeah, you, you guys got to like understand as well like um at that time like owners of these NBA teams they were just kind of in it for the revenue like yeah it mm-hmm. was really the only it was really just Celtics yeah that were really pushing to win the championship and championship when shit. when you win like playoff series and the championship like all the other players and the whole franchise gets extra money as an incentive for right. the NBA right. so like to see like yeah Dr. Bus like go out of his way and you can see how like passionate <laughs> he is Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riley, I think he just did like a really, really good job with that as well. I oh, think so. He was, was very charismatic. I thought the uh guy who played Magic Johnson, what was his name? Uh Quincy Isaiah. Isaiah. Quincy Isaiah. Yeah, Quincy. Isaiah. He was pretty accurate in his portrayal as well. It's like yeah, very so too, smiley, you know, Magic Johnson. I don't think he's as tall as Magic. I think they did some tricks with the camera angle. You can yeah. quite tell it's well, a bit yeah, obvious, right? Johnson, yeah, he's listed at like 6'9". Like, so yeah. I, like, I was like, how did yeah. they find someone that tall that looks exa- <laughs> like exactly like, Michael, yeah. like yeah. Magic Johnson? And um, <laughs> But yeah, he's he's about the same height as uh, Adrian Brody, who's also in the show. What? He's shorter than oh yeah, um, Adrian Brody. He's shorter than John C. Riley in real life. He plays oh, okay. uh, Matt Riley. They make right? him look tall. Pat Riley. Yeah, Pat Riley. Sorry, they, is it? They Dude, never. Pat um, yeah, Adrian Brody is in the show. That was so surprising for me. Yeah. I was like, what? This guy during the basketball guys... during the basketball scenes, they never show like you know him like you know like standing up like next to other people. Yeah. They always like cut away really quick. And you can tell that his fight isn't, like, you know, it's it's like obviously. I think it's, it's probably because they haven't. He hasn't started a game yet, a fully. Huh? He hasn't started a full game yet. Maybe they go into that in episode four. <laughs> no, I'm talking about his height. They're just trying <laughs> to like hide his height. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But to- speaking about Pat Riley, man, because yeah. I'm a big yeah. Miami Heat fan, and for those who yeah. don't know, um, Pat Riley is currently the. I think he's like yeah, the general manager of the Miami Heat. So Damn. general managers are the ones that like kind of choose who Who's comes coming. into the yeah. team so they try to recruit the superstars GMs. uh <laughs> notorious for bringing in lebron james and chris bosh all three in that kind of 2010 era right? right but like pat riley man like to see him the way he was in that in that kind of series right it yeah. was so interesting because now he's kind of known as like the godfather of basketball oh and, really yeah, and he came from that so he i don't want to spoil it but He ends up becoming the coach of the Lakers, but I think that was going to be obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. The Showtime I Lakers. I looked it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Assistant coach. And then, yeah, he went to the Miami Heat, and that was actually Dwayne Wade's first championship in 06 when he was a coach. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. he actually, like, there's this guy called Eric Spolstra, who's the current coach of the Miami Heat. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah he's yeah. literally Pat Riley's spitting image, like 70s, <laughs> 90s, like, hair pulled back. Yeah. Wears a suit to every game. It's just like, it was just so interesting to see Pat Riley. Is that Didn't he get into a fight with, yeah. in coaching, etc.? Didn't he get into a fight with Jimmy Butler like the yeah, other day? Yeah, that was recent. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Wait, what happened? What was the background? Um, I the so the background is is like because they were getting yeah. smashed by all these other teams and right. Warriors at the time didn't even have Curry or Draymond on at the time. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wait, this so was, was a while ago, is it? I thought no, the it was, this was like this was a couple of days ago. Yeah, oh, I think they're oh, second right, seed okay. now, and they've just been yeah, losing. Right quite a bit but they're still the second seed in the east oh okay that's uh, that's not bad but yeah i, I saw um they're trying to pick up their just, intensity yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about him? Then? <laughs> and they're like having a screaming match, and the um, who's the veteran guy? Uh, oh, uh, Hidonis Haslam. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was having a screaming match with Hidonis Haslam. They literally funny. just um, they sign him, they give him contracts just to stay on the yeah. team to like yeah. everyone in place. He doesn't yeah, actually right. play. He's kind of just like the lieutenant of the <laughs> yeah. team. I saw it's him. Like, he like came in to a game. Like after like five minutes, he like got a foul and he got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, yeah, I think with Dwight Howard was it? Yeah, yeah, is this yeah, Pat yeah, Riley. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, Udonis Haslam. Uh, oh, it's like yeah. a player that basically grew up in this thing called Heat Culture, oh, which is yeah. like kind of like boot camp vibes. Like, oh, okay, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool to see all those characters. Yeah. yeah. Another standout, I think, would be Red, the on. The owner of Celtics. Oh, uh, you were saying before, and, yeah. Yeah, um, he's played by Michael Chiklis. If he, I think people remember him. He was there in a couple of cop shows, mm. uh, The Shield. When people were really into TV shows and stuff, he's played a really good character in that. Also, Fantastic Four is <laughs> the thing. The oh yeah, yeah. That's, that <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that guy, yeah. Michael Chiklis. He's a really good actor. <laughs> yeah, and it's and really what? cool. He's what? Uh, Michael Chiklis. He was in. Um, Fantastic Four, the original. The original one. Yeah, not what the not the Miles Teller one. He was uh, the thing. The oh, thing, really? the rock, yeah, the right, rock okay. monster. But it was really cool to see him in that role. Like you could feel, yeah. you could feel like this um, sort of Irish mob, yeah, sort of um, behavior that he has, and yeah. the way he wears a suit. He kind he of seems like the a... penguin from Batman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He does have like an Irish mob. Yeah, it's, it's similar yeah. to Penguin, who's. Um, Obviously, a riff on the Irish mob. Mitch. It's yeah. uh, similar to that. But I, I, is he connected to the Irish mob? <laughs> you, you know that scene as well where he's, he's like topic. smoking the cigar yeah. in um, Buss's face? In the yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And he was talking about like, I am the logo. Like this, If you look at the Celtics logo, it's like a white man in the vest. Yeah, with a cigar. With a cigar. Yeah. And oh, it's, the leprechaun, is it? Yeah, and it's yeah. literally <laughs> just him, man. And I was just like, oh, wow. Oh, I never, really? Yeah, just like was, a when, moment of realization. When I, when I was a kid growing up, I was always like, "Why is there like a white dude as the Celtics yeah. logo?" Yeah, and then it's like <laughs> the most winningest team. And then back then, they only like wanted white players on their team as well. Oh, really? really? Yeah, okay. That's no, why. Like, I I was like, well, like this is third, way is past uh, oh, earlier yeah. than the seventies. It's, it's probably like an Irish sort yeah. of thing, right? They wanted to keep and right then, home. And then they saw um, uh, Bill Russell. Who won mm. them like eleven rings and they're like, oh shit, all right, okay, <laughs> more money, more dollar. <laughs> but it was pretty cool to see that. It's only three episodes, so obviously we don't have a full grasp mm. of uh, how the show is going to be yet. But I really mm. like the aesthetic of the show, yeah, the costumes mm. as well, like yeah. the the vibe they're giving out is very seventies, yeah, and also the the cinematography in the sense like the way it's edited. I would say the editing is really nice. And not a lot of people. You don't. You don't like the uh, fourth wall, but I. I sort of like the fourth I wall I, breaking. Like first episode, it put me off. Put but you off. Like, but after a while, second, third, yeah. I, I actually understood it. Like correct it terms, because I sort of need those reminders. We, I think we have to talk first though about yeah. um, Jason Clark. Yeah, Jason Clark Jerry, Jerry West. West yes, uh, Jerry West. Just do you want to mm. give some context about? No, nah, I want to see. I want to see. Oh, context. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So Jerry West, for those who don't know, is the logo of the NBA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's gone to nine straight finals before winning his first championship. Always losing to the Boston Celtics. Yeah, and in the in the series, you can actually see him like just like bottled up hatred. He just bottled hatred, and he's slowly descending into the sort of um, I would say descending into a negative lifestyle. Yeah, and he's slowly like breaking down. You also see his uh his childhood as well yeah his backstory yeah, which i had no <laughs> idea yeah. me too about. i have no idea it <laughs> explains why he's so hyper competitive yeah um yeah. if if you know who jerry west is now though uh he was the i think he was the general manager for the golden state warriors oh, um shit. so this is when they got like stephen curry kevin durant Damn. clay thompson and then he actually switched into the clippers yeah and then he got paul george Kawhi leonard so this guy is like well renowned for being able to bring superstars in. Yeah. So to see him struggle that much as a coach was kind of like, what the hell? What for me? Yeah, I was uh, just relatable. Like, I didn't know he was that aggro of a guy and yeah. that hyper competitive. Because when you look at his interviews or just watch him speak, even when he was in the top seventy-five, like he seemed kind of like chill, a little like Calm. nonchalant. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I guess it's because he's really old now, but yeah. Uh, even in the even in the show when he gets interviewed. 
or when he's talking, he's uh, pretty calm. But behind the scenes, he's like aggro. But it's a really funny sort of aggro. Like yeah. it doesn't come off as um a sort of like rude or like a dickheadish behavior. Yeah. It's 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 a relatable. You understand why he's angry. Yeah. You also understand his frustration because he never gets the team that he wants. But then mm-hmm. he realizes later on that okay, it's because of me, not yeah. the team. I'm not a good enough it, coach. It's so interesting to see as well, like him and Pat Riley, yeah. especially when they did retire, they kind of looked at themselves and they always asked like, well, what is it now? Because like basketball was all they knew. Yeah, the career. And you can kind of see the struggle for them coming back into the game yeah. in different roles, whether it be a general manager yeah. or like a coach. And also like even seeing Pat Riley like dismantle his whole garage and I was just like, oh man, like she... I would not be able to relate to this. But it was pretty, it's pretty cool. I really, I'm really excited to see what Adrian Brody is going to bring to the character of Pat uh-huh. Riley. Cause I don't even know who Pat Riley was till I watched the show. If, if you Google pictures of him mm. real quick, it will literally just look like an extra from the Godfather. Like. Extra from the Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> like the slick back hair and everything. Yeah. I think I, I did research about him a little bit. That's it. Because I wanted to see who would become the coach of the team as soon as he got introduced into the show i was like okay this is probably gonna lead up to something they they were saying that he had like a like a faggoty voice yeah or like a weird girly voice right yeah. but now he's like <laughs> he brings so much he's like got so much presence where yeah he like demands it when he's in a room it's a deep baritone yeah he talks like i'm oh, pat riley sorry about <laughs> vengeance vengeance is that is that Adrian Adrian, Adrian. Brody's? Jason uh, Jason Siegel's to... Jason Siegel's coming in as well. Jason Siegel. Uh, Jason Siegel. Yeah, the guy. Oh, How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother. He would probably know him. Oh, oh forgetting sorry. Sarah I Marshall. Is the other Siegel guy? <laughs> the action hero? Nah, bro. Steven Siegel. No one's Steven gonna hire Siegel. that dude. Bro. There's a lot of issues with Steven Siegel. Primarily, <laughs> his ability to work with other people. Right. But anyway, right. um, yeah, Jason Sigo is going to come. I'm really excited yeah. to see what he does. Yeah. And also, um, Rob Morgan, he's also in the show. Well, who does he, what does he do again in the show? I forgot his, um, I forgot his role. But he was see. present in the Daredevil series and the yeah. Netflix uh, Defender series, Rob Morgan. Uh, Gillian Jacobs as well is Pat Riley's wife. Is it? Right. Yeah, Chris Riley. Yeah. She plays a good supporter role, but um, I think the standout of this show is definitely Pat Rock, the John John C. Riley. He's such a great character, yeah, like, actor as well. Right. Like, yeah, I, I didn't think it was so likable. Yeah, I didn't really think that he was a serious actor because you know, doing roles like um, Step like Brother, you know, yeah, Rick Ruff had some really good he was, emotional moments. No, it was good. Yeah. It was good. He was even in King Kong. King Kong. Yeah, he was like a little bit. the Skull Island, King Kong Skull Island. Was he was a bit. crazy guy. Yeah. <laughs> you never think he'd do this type yeah, of robot. This type of he, actually, he was actually, I think it, they casted him really perfectly. He pulled because, it off as well because yeah, you don't see that guy as a yeah. person who gets Playboy bunnies. Yeah. yeah and yeah. when you watch the show, you just like you <laughs> immediately believe it because of his personality and his charm. Yeah. And the way yeah. he talks, like, bro, I want to learn how to talk yeah. like him, bro. It's just like <laughs> complete confidence in what he does. <laughs> and Anything he is, um, how, like, Jerry Buss but is he, not yeah. sorry. Uh, Jerry Buss is not like a typical, uh, you would say, owner. He's actually a really mm-hmm. smart individual in the sense that yeah. he had a degree in physical some chemistry or something like that. Yeah. And he, mm-hmm. he invented um, sort of chemicals for like weapons, weapons design yeah. and stuff. I was like, wow, that's oh, that's yeah, pretty crazy. And from it? that yeah. to real estate to basketball, I was like, wow, yeah. what a career! Like, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You could really see like. Uh, like salesman vibes from yeah the very I mean? salesman vibes it's very charming i i, I don't yeah. know if you guys have watched the show white gold it's on netflix oh is it uh white gold is it the it's... one with zach efron oh no that's gold. no no is no it... it's it's no, with the different. it's with one of two of the cast of in between is um jay oh and, yeah yeah i've jay. seen the first two episodes it, it's sort of like that the main character yeah. like i forgot his name the main character he he's sort of like jerry west i see him like has jerry west very outgoing and uh, very confident in what he's doing. Yeah, so, right. Oh, it was okay. very cool to see. Yeah. yeah, and I love the costumes, bro. Like the the clothes they were wearing, it was mm. immaculate. Very very seventies, but it didn't come off too campy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like some shows, they come off really campy. How show feels like a porno. 
Yeah, <laughs> like a porno. <laughs> yeah, it didn't feel of... like costumes though. But, like they are costumes, yeah. obviously, but it didn't feel like costumes. Yeah, it felt like oh, they're actually just wearing. Yeah, what they're just they wearing wear. what they're wearing, yeah. and it, right, that's right. all down to the costume designer, also the set designer as well. Yeah, but you don't know their names. <laughs> <laughs> I and I am in that shit, bro. <laughs> But yeah, I really love the show. I think we John, all John loves did. everything. <laughs> I really love. I love that. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, for the, for those that like, um, for the mainstream, for the basketball fans, or those who yeah. aren't really yeah. into basketball, I think you can yeah. enjoy this. You can you definitely can, enjoy you can this. Just look at it. Yeah. And I mean, it. what's not there? There's sex. <laughs> there's drugs. <laughs> there's a uh, there's comedy. <laughs> that just sums up. Gone in. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that that's like every <laughs> every uh, twenty plus kids, <laughs> every twenty plus adults like you know, the show. He, he's just gonna put the Lakers and like Magic Johnson's title, and people will watch it. Yeah, I think this is this um on HBO. Is it in America? Yeah, HBO Max. Yeah, yeah right. So the, I see it everywhere here in like Brisbane as well. Like yeah. when I walk around, there's like it's Showtime. There, it's on there the bus. the it's there next to the airport. There's like a huge billboard. Oh, and it there. shows like yeah, like right. This. And I was also on the way down from a highway. I also saw that as well. I yeah, was like, right. oh, watch it on binge, which is yeah, our Australian right. version of HBO. Also, shout yeah. out what, to what, HBO. What, what is that? What, 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 why isn't the HBO on Australia? HBO. Why is that? I'm not sure. It could be some sort of licensing laws with uh, Fox, right. etc., right. etc. Because Fox is also sort of binge in a sense. They yeah. have, I think it's like Foxtel Premium or something like that. Oh, Foxtel Go. Sorry, Foxtel Go. That's what they have here. That's also mm-hmm. some, some sort of licensing thing. But right. shout out to HBO Max, you know, like they're taking some, they're making some good shows, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because all I used to think about when I think about HBO is either Game of Thrones mm-hmm. or Entourage and that's it. But now they're diversifying quite a bit and putting mm-hmm. their chips on like yeah. um, different storylines. Because they could have easily gone, instead of Magic Johnson, they could have been, okay, let's make a show about Kobe Bryant, or let's make a show about, you know, um, let's make a show about Michael Jordan or something. But they went with Magic Johnson. Not to say that he's not as popular, but... No, but I feel like I think, I think Kobe like, Bryant and... Yeah. For the older audience, yeah, like, older they would audience. love They would this love show. this stuff. But yeah. they've also kind of tailored it in a way where... A young us in our 20s can, can really well. love it as yeah. well yeah <laughs> i hate it yeah. <laughs> yeah. i thought it was good i think in um you know e- everything's getting a series these days right yeah so i was like i was kind of like oh these guys are making me watch this do i really want to watch it it's like yeah i used to yeah, like yeah. magic johnson but but then um Not that much, it's quite yeah. uh yeah watching it it's quite they had their own like idea of what they wanted to make it's not like a throwaway series at all it, it really mm-hmm. is i think they, so they, have it something, it. they did something great with it which is yeah pretty cool yeah. it's an ode to hollywood and it's good because los um, angeles I would say. magic johnson kind of came into the league as a six eight point guard and like back then point guards were usually six five and you know um it wasn't a guy the size of a center and it was like you know him like not really giving a shit about like um what other people think and stuff and how he was like confident enough to you yeah, know yeah. go against the other people's you know set that's why they uh, call him magic right he played all yeah. the positions yeah. you, you see him, even yeah yeah even after that scene when at the party um with the other point guard who like ba- basically just embarrassed the hell Nixon, out of him yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude that, that um, was actually a pretty funny moment though but... yeah like <laughs> adding to what you're saying right like you're yeah. gonna see it in the series and as what john was saying like he could play all positions yeah that's why he's like really popular in his mm-hmm. first rookie year, he took the Lakers to the championship. Yeah, with Kareem, an aging Kareem. Uh, Kareem is like, mm-hmm. uh, like definitely up there in the top five of greatest of all yeah, time. Yeah. But right. Kareem was actually like injured as well because he's getting much older. Oh, okay. yeah. So he yeah. actually switched in from point guard, played small forward, then switched into like center. Yeah. So he yeah. played pretty much the whole any position, all positions Rotation. throughout the entire yeah. playoff series as well as the finals. And he was actually mm. the finals MVP. So it's never been done before where the rookie, yeah. rookie yeah. of the year, the rookie, and it ended up becoming the finals MVP. Like yeah. that's true. Even top tier players like right now, James Harden, Damian yeah. Lillard have never received a finals MVP mm. award, and he Pretty did cool. it in his rookie season. That's so yeah, that's crazy. It's unbelievable. That, is that his yeah. debut season? So yeah, debut season. Yeah, yeah, right. That's pretty cool. So you're gonna like, see it kind yeah. of shaped to that. Yeah. Even Michael Jordan took a while. To, I mean, like the competition that Magic Johnson is playing in, 
Michael Jordan was playing is different, but like Michael Jordan yeah. took a while for him to win a championship as well. So and that's pretty that's pretty crazy. Does he did he beat Larry Bird? Yeah. No, how many rings did Larry Bird win win? Uh I think Larry Bird had three. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Two or three. Magic I think, Johnson I think it's three, had five. Yeah. Magic Johnson had five, yeah. Yeah, right. But when okay. you talk about Larry Bird or Magic Johnson, yeah. they're like in the uh, like exact same level. Yeah. It's kind of pick right. or poison. Do you want like a playmaking point a guard, shooter, or mm-hmm. do you want someone just to drop fifty on your head? You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. like that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Larry Bird is yeah, so right. like Steph Curry, right? Of that time, because he would shoot from. So they're they're making percent. a lot of comparisons of Larry Bird to Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, yeah. is he really good at shooting? Kevin Durant is like seven feet. Yeah. And he plays like a guard, so he can do off the dribble and shoot. But he's seven feet. Shit. Seven footers should be near That's the rim huge. dunking. But Kevin Durant's like, nah, yeah, I'm, he's not I'm very just flexible. do it all. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like Larry Bird. Yeah. Larry Bird, I think, yeah, yeah. was like six, seven, six, eight. Six, seven, six, right. eight. Uh, relative to that time, he was able to move around with the ball pretty well. But yeah. his passing was good. But he was really yeah. efficient from three uh, yeah. mid range. Was he a small forward? Small forward, yeah. Right, okay. And he's also like a trash talker. Yeah, he does so much shit, man. Yeah. So really? much, like, when I, I was stories the, um, about Larry Bird, dude. Yeah, when everyone hated the, him, man, because he was the white boy yeah, yeah. like schooling all, all these black yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They hated him. <laughs> when I watched the uh, the Dream documentary, he came off like as the most professional person there. Right. No, because maybe because he was aging. He was like, oh yeah, he was pretty old. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty old. Group, yeah. He actually retired, and then they Johnson brought him too. back for the Dream. He looked like a proper like Irish irish person as well like yeah yeah like the big head of like slightly faded you, hair can you color. imagine like this skinny country boy just talking shit to you the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and then he's good as well yeah. <laughs> good at basketball. you look at the score and then he drops like 45 yeah. on you and you're just like oh god damn it anyway that's the review of the lakers show yeah we hope you go watch it if you want or follow Dude. us on Instagram at Aftermath Podcast <laughs> One Two exactly. to see some clips as well yeah. as some musings and writings on what we think about the show. And do you guys do you guys know what I'm watching right now? What that are you watching? Okay, let's yeah. Attack wait, what's, on Titan. Let's, let's go. Oh, I gotta watch the last season, man. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 do, what are you watching? My on, account. Man? I'm watching it on Anime Lab. <laughs> on anime yeah, I'll send you. Right. I'll send you my account. Yeah. If you, yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. you say less, need, it's probably like off one at the same time. Of, like, he's on Pornhub or some shit. Dude, they, like yeah, streaming it on there. Dude, hey. what? What? Hey. <laughs> they do that. Dude. They upload like seasons of Euphoria and shit on there. Do they? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how do you know? <laughs> because <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I wanted to watch. Uh, you. I was like, Euphoria, season one. Now he's stuttering, he's capping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, why why is it on your recommendation? But Every time I type in with Euphoria, it, was, it wasn't, you know. Ah, so <laughs> you did no. type it in. So. <laughs> I didn't type it in. I typed in Euphoria. What do you mean? Mm. Uh, but anyway, do you guys want to <laughs> say, just before we um, uh, just before we off the mic, do you guys want to say what yeah. shows you guys are watching currently? Uh, I'm currently watching yeah. season two of Top Boy. Top Boy? Yeah. Yeah. On a uh, quick, on quick one word review. Uh, currently really enjoying it. Uh, pays a lot of homage to the older series, Top Boy, yeah. Top Boy Summer House. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just super excited. It's really good. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, well, so I'm not watching times. anything. <laughs> that's cap. I just watch movies <laughs> one at a time. Yeah. I, I watched just Kimmy. Said, that's on just... binge this week. It's very, it's yeah. about like oh, anxiety. and I know why you're watching Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like habits, yes. You know, um, what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll search it up. I'll watch yeah. someone's review on that. You know, um, and Kimmy. And then I watched Once Upon a Time in My Hollywood. Yeah. And I watched The Big Lebowski for the first time this you morning. Like you just said you weren't right. watching anything, and you listed like. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not watching any shows, but I said oh, I watched okay. movies at a time. Fair. My Wait. Bad, so what? What is this? Unbreakable Kimmy. No, it's just called Kimmy. K I M I. It's with is it a um, TV show or movie? It's, it's with Zoe movie, Kravitz. A it's movie Kravitz. based on imagine if Siri. Yeah. Uh, it's like Kimmy is called, like Siri. Um, oh, Amazon Alexa. You watch Batman, is it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you um, seen yeah. Have you seen the show? Have you seen the movie Jexy? With um, no. Okay. Don't worry about it. John, what are you What are you watching currently? Oh jeez. <laughs> 
Uh, I was watching a Indian show called Eternally Confused. Is this the one on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eternally Confused. Is this romance? Angry and in love. Probably. Is this uh, romance? It's not romance. It's more sort of like yeah. I guess it's romance, but not really. It's um, right. It's more about the psyche of this uh, this loner, I would say, or socially awkward person, and oh, how okay. he tries to get dates. And I was right. like, shit, this is too relatable. <laughs> and it goes like through the online phase, the physical phase, and then like right, the friends. Right. It's a really oh, good okay. show. It's right. it's also sort of like uh, fourth wall breaking as well, because that's another mm-hmm. character, an imaginary character who's imaginary friend yeah. is. Yeah. You should definitely definitely go watch it if you really like um shows sort of like in between us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I would really compare it to that. It's right. that yeah. good. White Gold, I finished season two. That was really good. If you like, um, if you like the Lakers show, you would definitely like White Gold. It's or if you like really high octane shows with salesmen and shit, it's pretty good. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what? Um, what are what, you watching? What What episode are you on right now? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm on season that. three, man. I'm almost done with season oh, three. It's so okay. fucking sad. Dude, it gets oh, so much politics. Dude, hey. Game Walking of Thrones of nothing, anime world. Nothing what, what? on. Was, what's your favorite? Nothing okay, just real this. quick before we head off, what's your favorite um season of Attack on Titan so far? Um, all of them. It gets it gets better with every season. I really like really? the politics as well. Season two was just all about politics, okay. and I really like that stuff. But season three, man, that's oh, it's good. It's good shit. It's probably the best anime of all time. I gotta okay. say. Okay. I gotta say, dude, okay. it's like the kill count, man. Oh, like they get they get you attached to characters, and then you know. I don't want to spoil anything. I, I'll let you go watch it. Just let me know what you think. Wait, you're it's in season so three. Have you're you not guys spoiling anything? No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not spoiling anything. Okay, okay. Wait, are you on season... Have you finished season three? Dude, I'm on the last season. Oh, okay. Because no, season worry, three right. was split into part one and part two, right? No, and no, that's no, season, season four. Oh, I'm on season, season four. four. I'm on season four then. Oh, okay, part one, part two. Dude, Dude I it's did... so okay. good. It's so fucking good. Gotta watch it. John's I hasn't seen it. Otherwise, what? you'll rave about it. Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah. I watched up to season one, I think. No, I'll get to it. It's just like, I'm not that yeah. motivated to watch it yet. Right. I'm watching a lot of other shows. And you know, I have to has a... also, yeah. um, just a heads up before we bounce. Uh, Moon Knight is coming out uh, March hmm. 31st. Yeah. And definitely, whoever's listening, stay tuned. We'll be... March 31st? Yeah. Less than four we'll days. We'll be reviewing it. <laughs> yeah, we will definitely be reviewing it. So watch out for episode is it 29? 30. 30. Okay. My bad. My bad. Yeah, episode 30. It's gonna be lit. Anyway, awesome. thanks for what uh, thanks for listening and thanks for watching, guys. Also Thank definitely you. follow us on the socials, Aftermath Podcast One Two. We're also on um YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. And and most streaming platforms check out our link tree yeah, uh, link on tree. our instagram page the aftermath podcast yeah. one too also where are you checking they'll be on the description yeah yeah sounds Anyways, good cheese <laughs> Schla- bye <laughs> <laughs> thank you bye brisbane oh it's <laughs> shit <laughs> okay, shit. Damn, they're gonna swat the whole state bro <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, all right all right